In this video, we're going to talk about the concept of isoelectric point. So, an isoelectric point is something we consider when a molecule has several ionizable functional groups. So, for instance, the molecule we're going to use as an example is an amino acid called glycine. And so we'll talk more about this in the next uh, module. Uh, but for now, let's suffice it to say that glycine is an amino acid that has two ionizable functional groups, an amine group uh, and then a, a carboxylic acid group or a carboxylic group, okay, as it's shown. Right. The pronation states and the charges of these ionizable groups are sensitive to pH because uh, these each have their each of these functional groups have their own pKa's, uh, and so they're going to be protonated or deprotonated uh, depending on what the pH of the solution is. And so the, the, that protonation state is also going to affect the uh, charge of the functional group. So, for instance, uh, with the glycine, for instance, let's take the uh, amine group. Uh, if this gets deprotonated, it's going to go from having this functional group is going to have, instead of a plus one charge, it's going to have a neutral charge, okay, when it's deprotonated. So now that is going to affect, depending on what the protonation states of these two functional groups are in glycine, it's going to affect the overall molecular charge. So as glycine is drawn right now, we have a positive charge on the amine, and then the uh, carboxylic acid is deprotonated uh, to carboxylate, so it has a negative charge. And so we have a plus one charge on one functional group and a minus one charge on the other functional group. So the overall molecular charge is zero, has a net zero charge, okay? And so the isoelectric point then is the point at which uh, most of the molecules in a solution are, or the number of molecules in a solution of, in this case, glycine, uh, with a net zero charge, so for instance, having this uh, protonation state where for glycine, uh, where the uh, um, the amine has a positive charge and the carboxyl has a negative charge, it's when this is maximized. So remember, when we're talking about these things like pK and isoelectric point, we have a solution of these molecules. It's not just one molecule, all right? It's a bulk solution of these. So when the number of these molecules at their, with a net zero charge is maximized, that's when we see the isoelectric point. And this is important for a number of things that we'll talk about uh, in later modules, including solubility. Right? So let's just discuss how do we find the isoelectric point. All right, so what we need first is we need an idea of what the titration curve looks like. Okay, so, and for that, we need to know what the pK is. So we can draw a titration curve for glycine. So again, there are two ionizable groups here, right? There's the amine group and the carboxylic acid. And so I've had, I have this drawn, uh, uh, the glycine is drawn in this top part here uh, where both of the functional groups are fully protonated. So in the fully protonated form, uh, this amine group is actually an, an ammonium group and has a positive charge. And then the carboxylic acid is protonated and has a neutral charge. Okay. The pK of the amine is 9.78 and the pK of the carboxylic acid is 2.35. And so we can draw a titration curve uh, that shows uh, the presence of two pKa's, one at 2.35 for the carboxylic acid and another one at 9.78 for the amine. All right, so it has these two sort of plateau features indicative of two pKa as this molecule. All right, and then so if we have a solution of glycine at pH zero, all right, so we put, uh, we follow this titration curve and we have a green dot uh, at pH zero, okay? Practically, uh, uh, practically all or most, a large majority of the molecules are gonna have this protonation state positive or a protonated uh, uh, amine and a protonated carboxylic acid, okay? But let's say we change the pH to pH 7. What's going to happen? So if we change that pH to pH 7, we're going to follow the titration curve, and now we've moved our little dot to uh, pH 7. And you'll notice that as that passed from pH 0 to pH 7, it passed through the first pKa, so pK1 
of at 2.35, all right? And remember, that's for the carboxylic acid. So in traversing this, you go from a protonated carboxylic acid to a deprotonated carboxylate, okay? So the carboxylic acid gets deprotonated, right? And now the protonation state of most of the molecules at pH 7 are uh, most of the glycine molecules at pH 7 are going to be a protonated amine with an NH3 plus. So that keeps its plus charge, but then the carboxylic acid gets deprotonated uh, to a carboxylate and now has a negative charge. Okay. Now let's do this one more time. Let's change the pH to pH 12. Okay. Again, it's going to follow the titration curve. It's going to go through the second pKa of pK2 9.78. All right. And at this point, where this pH is now 12, all right, since it, since this passed through the second pKa, which is the pKa for the amine, that means that this is now going to be uh, deprotonated again, because it's more basic on this side. And a deprotonate, the solution uh, now has the amine deprotonated. So this deprotonates from a positive, so having three protons to two, and then in the process, it loses its positive charge and now it's neutral, okay? So this functional group goes neutral. And so at pH 12, most of the glycine molecules in your solution are going to have this protonation state of NH2 and COO minus, all right? So now what we're looking for when we're looking for isoelectric point is the overall molecular charge. So let's calculate the overall molecular charge for each of these species. So at pH, pH zero, the charge is going to be plus one, okay? So plus run from the amine and neutral from the carboxylic acid. This gets deprotonated, all right? The carboxylic acid gets deprotonated at pH seven. So we have a positive charge on the amine and a negative charge on the carboxylate. And so the overall charge is zero. Plus one minus one is zero, right? And then at pH 12, because another deprotonation event occurs, at the amine, we now have a neutral amine and then a negatively charged carboxylate for an overall molecular charge of minus one. Okay, so you can see as we cross pKa values, right, we decrease the charge by one each time because you're losing a proton, which has a plus one charge. Okay, so what we're looking for then when we're looking for isoelectric point or we're trying to calculate our isoelectric point is at what point is the molecule uh, in what region of the titration curve does the molecule have a charge of zero, all right? And so we shade in this region, okay, because it's between the two pKa values, all right? Of uh, pK1, uh, 2.35, and pK2 of 9.78. So somewhere in this region is going to be where the isoelectric point is, somewhere between 2.35 and 9.78, right? Because this is where uh, the predominant charge is going to be zero. All right, and depending on where you are in the titration curve, uh, there may be uh, less uh, charge zero over here, equal uh, glycines in charge zero at this point, uh, and then uh, more um, with a uh, more of the species of charge zero versus charge one uh, as you pass the isoelectric point. But the calculation of the isoelectric point at this point is pretty easy. You just take the average of the two bookend pKa values, all right? So isoelectric point is pK1 plus pK2 over two. And so the isoelectric point is found as 6.07.